have, have you ever wanted something that you didn't have? <laughs> have you ever wanted maybe to be something that you weren't? Maybe you, you desired something different in your life. I think, I think maybe that's why Halloween's so popular. It's because for just a little bit, you can be something that you not you aren't normally. You can have something that you don't, and and that just happens. And then also, there's the candy part of Halloween, and that's good. Now, personally, there are some things that uh, I wish I had, but I don't. You, you ever been there? Often. I feel like I should be something that I'm not. I think <laughs> that wasn't a real sneeze. Um, I think many of us struggle. This is kind of embarrassing. I don't, I'll hide it so you don't get distracted. Uh, Many of us uh, struggle with this idea of what we could be. I, I recently just finished this uh, biography of a guy named Eugene Peterson. And I, I read the whole thing, and it was just mesmerized by it. And, and Eugene Peterson had this desire for something that he didn't feel like he had. He wanted to be something that he wasn't. And he said it this way. He said, all I want to do is to become the kind of person that people think I am. All I want to do is to become a saint, but secretly, so no one knows it. A saint without any of the trappings, which meant that he wanted something that he just didn't have. He longed for something that he wanted to attain, but he didn't feel like he was there. Though I think as we look at his life, some of us go, well, absolutely, that's what you did. You attained that in your life. Now, tomorrow is a day where a lot of people, some people in the Christian tradition, celebrate this thing called All Saints Day, which has a history that goes all the way back, actually, to the first century. But then in, in the eighth century, Pope Gregory III, he transitioned the holiday from uh, to November 1st. And so October 31st, then, is the Holy Eve, the Holy Eve before All Saints Day. Now, hallow, the word hallow means holy. And Eve is like evening, even, and that, that's, so it's the Halloween. It's the night before All Saints Day, the Holy Eve. Kind of like Christmas, the Christmas Eve, it's Halloween, the night before All Saints Day, which, you know, that's what we'll be celebrating at Fall Fest and all across the country, this idea of this holiday before All Saints Day. And, and though it has turned into something kind of weird at some level, uh, it's still something that a lot of people celebrate. Now, it, it made me think, though, because tomorrow will be the day that they celebrate the saints. So I asked myself the question, after reading Eugene Peterson's book and just thinking about All Saints Day, what is a saint? Do I know, have I known any saints? What is a saint? Now, the Roman Catholic official definition is this. Are you ready? A saint is a person in heaven or going to heaven who lived a heroically virtuous life, who offered their life for others, or were martyred for their faith, and who are worthy of imitation. A saint, a person in heaven, or going to heaven, who lived a heroically virtuous life, who laid their life down for others, who may have been even martyred for the faith, 
And this sentence just got me. And I hope it's something that you hear. And they are worthy of imitation. I'm not sure that's me completely. I want it to be me. I, I want to be that kind of person that you could just imitate me and, and you could model me and then that would be exactly what you need to become a saint. But I think I have a long way to go. I, I hope I'm close. I hope I'm closer than I was 10 years ago. But I'm not sure that I'm there. What about you? What about your life? What about your actions? What about your thoughts right now? In Philippians 4, 8, the Apostle Paul writes this message. And he says this to the church in Philippi. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is all about your thinking. Verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. It, it's not surprising to me that Paul kind of ends this section and he returns to this idea of imitating. Do you live a life worthy of imitation? He urged them in chapter 2 of Philippians to take the mindset of Christ who took the very nature of a servant. So take this mindset. Be like Christ. In chapter 3, he says simply, join together and follow my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So Paul here has not only given us good instruction, he's not only taught us well, but he says, I have shown you how to live. I am an example of how to live. Don't just hear what I have to say, do what I have done. And this is Paul being confident in the way that he has lived his life. So it seems like to me, Paul in the scriptures, especially here in Philippians, he shows us that his concern is not only for the content of the gospel, like the words that are spoken, but the way that the gospel is actually lived out in the world. The way that Christians actually live the good news to others. Paul believes that we should perform the gospel, think of a performance to do something with action, as well as proclaim the gospel. Some people are good at saying all the right things, but are they good at living in the right way? And Paul says, that's what you need to do. His hearers need to be students, learners, followers, disciples. They need to look at Paul and follow after what he has done. And they, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Do what I do. Now, I think that's pretty intriguing. And I wonder how many of us are making that as a goal in our life, to live a life worthy of imitation. Scott McKnight, the New Testament scholar, says it this way. This generation, your generation, wants an authentic gospel. They want, man, you want real. You want it to be real. You want an authentic gospel, one that is both proclamation and performance. A gospel that actually deals with the real world that you live in. If Christianity is of, is of no good in your actions and the way we live in the world, if it's just a theory, then it's not the full gospel according to McKnight, according to Paul. New Testament scholar D.A. Carson says this. If you haven't said to someone, now I'm asking you this. If you haven't said to someone, do what I do, then you haven't understood the New Testament concept of discipleship. 
if you haven't said to someone else, now I'm kind of talking to Christians right here, but if you're a non-Christian, if you're not a believer, this is a good thing for you to hear and to learn as well. But if you have not said to someone else, follow me, do what I do, then you haven't understood the New Testament call to make disciples. Whoa. I think that's convicting. Can you say that to someone? Can you, can you say that to anyone? Follow me. Just do what I do. And, and mean it. Like someone's going to follow you, right? They're going to follow you, and they're going to watch your actions, and they're going to do what you do. Yeah, just follow after me. You know, you ever fo play follow the leader? Just follow, follow after me. Do what I do. Do the things that I think the thoughts that I think. Get in my head and think the thoughts that I think. I'm going to lead you the way of Christ. Do the things that I do with your, you know, with your cell phone, your practices on your cell phone. Just follow after me. The things that you do when no one else is looking. Check the history of my laptop. Watch the way I treat my parents. Watch the way I treat other people. Look at my finances. Look at everything about my life. Walk with me. Follow after me. Do the things that I have done, and you will be what? I mean, if that was true in your life, if you said that to someone, would you, would you be leading them down the right road? Or would you be leading them astray? We are called to invest in people in such a way that they can look at our lives. This is discipleship. It's not real pretty. There's no really great program for it. It's, it's simply, I'm going to live my life I'm going to grow. I'm going to do the things that I do, and I want you to come with me and do it. Because what I'm doing is following Jesus and trying to do the things that he did and trying to be like, now, I know this is all a little bit intimidating, but this is the process of discipleship. I know that none of us live a perfect life, but we are called to get so intimate with God and with Jesus that the way that we live our lives can be translated by others and we can be a mentor. We can do that with other people. That's it. That's the process of discipleship. You do what I do as I follow Christ. Now, there might be some of you who are going, man, I just, that's where I need to be, but I'm not there. I'm not there. And you're like, how does this apply to me? So what I want you to do as we close today is get out your phone. Some of you are going to have to get it out to scan anyway. Some of you already are out playing Clash of Camp Clans or whatever else. Uh, wait, is that old? Uh, maybe old. Um, get, out your, get out your phones and get on your notes. Now, you remember the notes. I asked you to do this at the beginning, the first chapel, and I asked you to write down just say these words, I believe. And the challenge was to write down I believe and then to start articulating what it is you're, you believe. College is a great time for you to really solidify your beliefs. What is it that you really believe about God, about the church, about heaven and hell? What is it that you really believe about what it means to be holy, what a saint is, all of these things? Now, in that same note that you started, I want you to think of a person right now that they may not be a saint, but they are someone that you absolutely 100% know. They are someone that you could follow after and you would be led down the right road. So I want you to think about someone in your life right now who would be this mentor, somebody that you could imitate, somebody that you could... If you could say, hey, I want to be just like them, you may know them, you may not. But write, 
write that down right now. Write down the person's name. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Think through it. Write down the person's name who you think, man, this is somebody I need to seek a relationship with. If they're really famous and write books, well, I need to, like, just write them and say, hey, teach me what you know. If it's someone that you, like a parent or a relative, then you need to reach out to them and say, hey, here's someone that I think that you, that I, mean, I, I really want you to teach me. Okay, then on the next line, I want you just to write this, your name. Just write your name. So you, you have this person's name that you're going to seek out. Uh, I know you're all participating. And then you're going to write your name. And by your name, here's what I want you to write. Am I living a life worth imitating? Am I living a life worth imitating? imitating. And I really want you to mull over that. I want you to spend some time in these next few days just thinking about that. What is it about your life that is worthy of imitation? I'm sure there are some things. And then I'm sure there are areas where you're like, oh, goodness, I need to really work on that. That's called being human. But our goal, our desire, our telos, where we're heading, that is that place where others might say that is sainthood, where we are heroically virtuous. Oh, I like that. We all like heroes. I saw Batman here today. He's my favorite superhero. I mean, the real Batman. Wait, is there a real Batman? We all like heroes. So those words, heroically virtuous, I love. Am I living a life worth imitating? I want you to think about that. I want you to go away from here thinking about that. And the last thing I want you to write is I want you to write someone, maybe a friend, the name of someone that you think maybe I should reach out to and think about mentoring. Maybe there's someone that I can connect with that we could grow in this journey together. Maybe there's a friend that, or someone that needs a friend on my hallway or in my life or at work or in my classes that I see that, that sits alone, that needs somebody to be a friend to. And, and think about someone that you could actually Use your gifts and your talents to invest in them and give them a part of who you are and write that name down. And if there's no one that comes to mind, just write, God, bring someone into my life right now. Just write it down. God, bring someone into my life who I can mentor and I can invest in. Yeah, there are things in our lives that we sometimes want, but we don't have. That's true. And I'll be honest, I don't want hair. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm fine with my cut. I'm really fine with that, you know. It's real easy to take care of. I, I encourage others to just join me in this, uh, in this journey. I don't. But I do want to know that my life is worthy of imitation. I really do. And I want to work every day to try to live that way. And I know I'm not exactly where I need to be, but isn't that all of our stories? So that's your encouragement today. Will you stand and let's just pray. I'm going to let you out early. You've got lots of stuff going on in your life. We'll get our chapel checkers in place. Let me pray with you. God, thank you for this day. And for those that have gone before us, who are this cloud of witnesses that stand and root us on 
Lord, I pray that we will keep our eyes on a goal in our lives, a goal to be something more than what we are now, something even more committed and sold out to you. Lord, help us to follow after your son, Jesus, who showed us the perfect example of how we should live our lives. And Lord, help us to live in that way so that we can be an example to other people. God, I pray that you would bring some people into my life that can come up close beside me and teach me to be more holy and to grow closer to you. And I pray for others who um, I could perhaps mentor. And Lord, I pray the same prayer for every student here. Help us in our journey. We love you and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. God bless.